In a different video, we looked at how to mount and triage E01s of BitLocker drive images in the Windows environment. In this video, I'm going to walk through a few different options on how to do that in the Linux environment. I will be doing this in the Kane 14 distro. See the links below on how to download that distro. So if you are the person doing the data acquisition, here are the steps you can take to get the BitLocker recovery key. From the control panel, you want to go ahead and select BitLocker Drive Encryption and then find the disk volume of interest, which in our case is the letter E and BitLocker is on. And I'm going to select back up your recovery key and then you can choose to save to your Microsoft account or save to a USB flash drive or save to a file or print the recovery key. Let's choose save to a USB flash drive so that we have it on a USB. The pop-up asks us which drive we want to save it to, so I selected D and then save. All right, now that we have the BitLocker password and or the recovery key and or the volume key file, let's look at how to mount and look at the BitLocker images in Linux. The first thing we need to do is to set up some mount points for us to use. We will need one directory for the X mount process to mount the E01, another directory for the decoded BitLocker volume, and then another directory once we have gotten the logical files that we want to see. So I'm going to do sudo make dir slash mnt slash X mount slash mnt slash decrypted and then slash mnt decrypted logical. Next, we're going to use the xmount command to convert the E01 to a virtual DD file. So I'm going to go ahead and do sudo xmount dash dash EWF to specify the input format of an expert witness format. And then I'm going to specify the E01 of sandisk 32 gigabyte dot E01. And then dash dash cache slash temp slash bl dash cache. So what I'm saying is that I'm going to create a cache file and call it slash temp slash bl cache. Any changes to the image will be written out to that cache. And lastly, I'm going to specify the output of dash dash out raw for the raw format and then slash mnt slash x mount. All right, once we hit return, uh, Linux gives us no feedback. So let's go ahead and look at the output of the xmount folder. I'm going to do ls-lh uh, slash mnt slash xmount. And we see that it generated the virtual DD file for us. All right, next I'm going to use the kpartx to create a device map for all the partitions of that DD. So I'm going to do sudo kpartx dash av slash mnt slash xmount slash sandisk 32 gb dot dd. All right, and after we hit return, we see that the system has created the loop named loop1p1, which is going to be the image that we're going to be looking at. All right, and if we use this type to check out the partition table by doing sudo this type of slash dev slash mapper slash loop1p1, we see that there is a partition typed as NTFS volume, but then it may also be a FAT12 with a volume size of zero. So that's a clue that something isn't quite right. I'm going to use the dd command to read the file. And since I only want to see the header, I will go ahead and pipe it to the uh, xxd command and only look at the first 47 octets. So I'm going to do sudo dd if equals slash dev slash mapper slash loop one p1 pipe xxd dash l48. All right, so basically we see the header of FEV-FS, which we know is the BitLocker signature. Okay, so now that we have confirmed that the partition is BitLockered, let's unlock it with the different tools available in Linux. The first tool we're going to use is the tool ThisLocker, which comes pre-installed with Kane 14. So if it does not come with your operating system, you can type the following to install it sudo apt install thislocker. 
All right, so with this locker, you can give it the password or the recovery key uh, that was saved onto the thumb drive during the acquisition process. So I'm gonna go ahead and do sudo this locker dash capital V for volume. And then I'm gonna specify uh, the volume that has the BitLocker image, which is slash dev slash mapper loop one P one dash U, which means I want to decrypt the volume using the user password method. And if we want to use a recovery key, we can use the dash P option. And lastly, if we want to use that recovery file, we can specify the file with the dash F option. All right, then we're gonna follow it with the dash dash, which marks the end of the program options. And then lastly, we're gonna give the argument of the mount point, which I'm gonna call uh, slash MNT slash decrypted. All right, once we hit enter, we are prompted for the BitLocker password. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter the password. And then after entering the proper password, it results in us successfully decoding the image and the output is a file named this locker dash file in the folder we specified. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. So I'm gonna do sudo ls dash lh of slash mnt slash decrypted. And so there is the file this locker dash file. And if we run this type on this file, we see that the output makes sense now because it is a NTFS file system and the volume of the size we expected. All right, so the last step we have to do is we have to mount that decoded DD so that we can see the logical files. So all we have to do is do sudo mount dash O loop slash MNT slash decrypted slash disk locker dash file slash MNT decrypted logical. All right, so finally we are able to go ahead and take a look at the files by doing ls dash l of slash mnt decrypted logical. And we see the folders boring stuff and juicy stuff, which were indeed on the BitLocker volume. All right, great, this worked. And as always, we gotta remember to clean up after yourself by unmounting everything that we just did. So I'm gonna do sudo umount of slash mnt slash decrypted logical, and then sudo U mount of slash MNT decrypted. I'm going to leave the X mount and K part X images intact because I want to show you that entering the BitLocker key also works. So let's take a look at the file that contains the key and then copy the string. So I'm going to do more of SSD dash BitLocker dash key dot text. All right. So this is the file that was extracted out when we extracted the image. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy it. And then I'm going to type in the command again to do sudo dish locker dash capital V slash dev slash mapper slash loop one P one dash P and then paste my BitLocker key. Notice that you don't want a space here. This is kind of a weird thing, but no spaces uh, wanted. And then dash dash and then slash MNT slash decrypted. All right. So once again, that is gonna go ahead and decrypt that BitLocker volume and create a file called slash MNT slash decrypted slash disklocker file. So now we have to mount that file, right? Because that is a uh, DD image. So we have to mount it to see the logical files in there. So we're gonna do sudo mount dash O loop slash MNT slash decrypted slash disklocker dash file and then mount it to slash MNT slash decrypted logical. All right, and once again, we can do ls dash L of slash MNT slash decrypted logical, and we see the folder is boring stuff and juicy stuff. So we're able to decrypt using the different methods. All right, once again, we're gonna go ahead and do sudo U mount of slash MNT slash decrypted logical and slash MNT slash decrypted. And I'm gonna leave, once again, the K part X and X mount uh, files because we need that for our next tool. Let's try the decryption process again with a second tool. This one is named Crypt Setup, and it is included in most Linux distros. The way that this command works is that we're going to give it an action like open or close or status, etc. 
And in this case, I want to open the encrypted container. So I'm going to use the action open, which is followed by the encryption type like BitLocker or Lux or Veracrypt or File Vault 2, etc. And then it is followed by the encrypted device, which in this case is slash dev slash mapper slash loop one P one. And then lastly, the name that will be given to the resulting mapping, which in this case, I'm going to use decrypted drive. So the command is sudo crypt setup open dash dash type equals B I T L K slash dev slash mapper slash loop one P one decrypted drive. So once I hit enter, we're going to be prompted for a password. And at this point, you can either put the actual password or the numeric recovery key. And the result is that it creates a new device that you can see under dev mapper. So let's go ahead and do ls l of slash dev slash mapper. Now we can mount the decrypted drive to see the logical data. So I'm going to do sudo mount slash dev slash mapper slash decrypted drive slash mount slash decrypted logical. Okay, so now that it's mounted, let's take a look at the contents by doing ls l of slash mnt slash decrypted logical. And once again, we see boring stuff and juicy stuff. All right, so that's the tool crypt setup. So again, remember to clean up after yourself by unmounting everything you just did. So I'm going to do sudo umount of slash mnt decrypted logical. And then sudo crypt setup close of decrypted drive. The third and last tool we're going to look at is BDE mount. And this tool is not included in the Kane 14 distro by default. Right, so if you type BDE mount, it's going to tell us that it doesn't exist. So we can go ahead and install the libbde-util package. So I'm going to go ahead and do sudo apt install libbde-utils. And apparently something went wrong with my system install. So I'm going to follow the instructions on how to fix that. So I'm going to do sudo apt dash dash fix dash broken install. And I'm just going to go ahead and accept all of the defaults and just keep on clicking through. And when it's done, I'm going to try to install libbde-utils again. So I'm going to up arrow. Uh, and then do the sudo apt install of libbde-utils. And look at that. Now it is okay. All right, let's see what tools uh, we just downloaded. So I'm gonna type bde and then double tap on the tab key. And I see that there is bde info and then bde mount. Okay, so let's try out bde E info by pointing it to our BitLocker volume. So I'm going to do sudo bde info slash dev slash mapper slash loop one p1. All right, it takes a little while, but it comes back and tells us quite a bit of info from the encryption method, the volume identifier, the creation time, the description which tells me the machine where this volume was encrypted. Um, the name of the volume, the number of key uh, protectors, and so forth. And so in this case, I have a password and the recovery key. All right, so now let's decrypt the volume and mount it using the bde mount command. So I'm going to do sudo bde mount dash p for password, and then I'm going to actually type in the password here. And then slash dev slash mapper loop one p one, and then slash mnt decrypted. All right, when it's done, let's take a look at what it generated. I'm going to do sudo ls dash lh of slash mnt decrypted, and what we see here is the file bde one, which is essentially the decrypted dd. So once again, we need to mount that file using the, the loops. So I'm going to do sudo mount 
dash o loop slash mnt slash decrypted slash bde1 and slash mnt decrypted logical. All right, so once again, I'm going to do ls dash l of slash mnt decrypted logical. And once again, we see boring stuff and juicy stuff. So bde mount works with the password, not a problem. Let's go ahead and undo that so we can try uh, looking at using the volume key file. All right, so I'm going to do sudo umount of slash mnt decrypted logical, sudo umount slash mnt slash decrypted. Okay, so as we saw earlier, the drawback of using a password or recovery key is that the text that we type in the command line is basically wide open, right, because it's part of the command. And so if you are worried that people is either going to intercept this command or see it in the history file, here is where using the volume key file is handy because we don't expose the password or recovery key. So I can do sudo bde mount dash s of the recovery key, which is the .bek file. And then once again, I specify the encrypted container which is slash dev slash mapper slash loop one p one and then the mount point of slash mnt slash decrypted. Looking at the output there, I can do sudo ls dash lh of slash mnt decrypted. And once again, I see that bde file, which is the decrypted image of the BitLocker volume. So to mount it, I can just do sudo mount dash o loop slash mnt slash decrypted slash bde1 and then mount it to slash mnt decrypted logical and once that's done i can do ls dash l slash mnt decrypted logical and once again we have boring stuff and juicy stuff all right hey guess what time it is it's cleanup time all right so now we can wind everything down because we're done with this demo so I'm going to do sudo umount of slash mnt decrypted logical, sudo umount of slash mnt decrypted, and don't forget to go all the way back to our kpartx and xmount commands. So I'm going to do sudo kpartx dash dv of slash mnt slash xmount slash sandisk32 gb.dd, and then I'm going to do sudo umount of slash mnt slash xmount and to double check i can type ls blk i can type the mount command and we see that everything has been unmounted so as you have seen we can use at least three tools to help mount a bitlocker encrypted drive image in linux depending on the distro you're using the tool you want to use may or may not be there but you can easily install them the process is similar regardless of which tool you're using. You first start by mounting the E01 and creating a mapping to the partitions of that image. I use Xmount and KpartX. There are other ways that you can do this. And once you've done that in this demo, the device map of slash dev slash map or slash loop one P1 is the BitLocker encrypted volume. Then you can use one of the three tools to decrypt the volume by using either the BitLocker password, the recovery key, or volume key file. And once decrypted, you can take just one more step and mount the decrypted image in order to see the logical files. And as always, don't forget to unwind everything once you are done with working with the encrypted image. Otherwise, bad things may happen. I know that you will enjoy another Linux video like this one here. Leave a comment below and make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.